Good Morning Revolution, and welcome to Good Morning Revolution. I have trouble saying that twice, Rosanna and Anita. <laughs> how are you? Hope good, good morning. Good morning, Revolution. Good morning, Revolution. Anita? Good morning, oh, Revolution. Gotta, good morning, Revolution. Oh, See here, twice. Here, yeah. <laughs> we got to maybe find a little poem, a little rhyme to yeah. get that thing moving. Well, it's been quite a week. Um, and uh, every week is always filled with all different different kinds of things. And so we have a lot to talk about uh, this morning. Uh, starting with, I read an a op-ed this morning that said that the Democrats are about to lose the midterm elections because the right wing is using culture wars to uh, win uh, the support of confused people in the suburbs and they're using uh, critical race theory and all different socialism and immigration to scare the hell out of uh, soccer moms and soccer dads and 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 so on and so forth and that uh, and defund the police Rosanna do you think that uh, and and that the and that they're going to win because they control a majority of the uh, state houses, and uh, they're re they're redrawing the districts, the legislative, the electoral districts, and and they only have to win one seat in the Senate, and three or four seats in the House, and it'll be the revenge of uh, what's the name of the head of the Republican party in the house, it'll be Trump's revenge, the revenge of Trump and the, uh, uh, Rosanna. Are you ready for it? <laughs> I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight against it. I think that's what we all need to do is, is uh, fight against this rhetoric, expose it for what it really is. Otherwise, people will fall for it. You know, we've seen it in other countries where the left has taken power and then they're brought down because the, the right and their rhetoric and their, you know, it's this battle of ideas that we constantly have to keep fighting and the, and, and the right is constantly bringing up new ways to, to do it. So we've got to be, you know, ready to, to battle it and to confront it and not, not sidestep it, but just really um, take it on. We've got to take it on and really build that consciousness among the people to, to do their research, to think for themselves, to not just believe things, you know, because uh, one person said it. Right, right, right. Well, you know, in Brazil, they use corruption to great effect against uh, Dilma and, uh, and, and against, uh, what's the name of the guy? <laughs> His name is on the tip of my tongue. The famous steel worker. Lula. President. Lula, Lula. yeah. They used, and Bolsonaro got an office on the corrupt. Yeah. But now, and the Demo the, the Obama and them was squeaky clean. They didn't play that corruption. And uh, therefore, the Republicans, they used uh, Anita, uh, uh, Mrs. Clinton's emails and uh, Benghazi, you know, a little bit, but uh, other than that, they weren't able to do much. But now in culture wars, uh, Anita, there was a dude running for a school board uh, in the party, and just recently, a couple of weeks ago, hmm. and he won a third of the vote, by the way. He did not first time out, but he said critical race theory. <laughs> And social were the main issues in his campaign. And they they, they red baited him and they said, you want to teach white people, white kids to hate their skin color. That's what Pence said in a speech the other week. What state is that in China? Uh, New York. Oh. New York. New York State. And <laughs> so, you know, um, is that playing out in Ohio? Oh. Big time. It's a big thing in Ohio right now because, I mean, Dave Yost was one of the, Dave Yost is one of our more problematic uh, state officials. I mean, they're all Republicans, but he's, he's rabid anti-women uh, and, and he, he came out with the attorney general's letter. I think 19 attorney, attorneys general signed a letter 
against the critical race theory. And then this one uh, representative in uh, the Ohio legislature uh, put, put forward a bill to limit, uh, you know, and the, the way they describe the teaching of critical race theory, it has really nothing to do with the actual critical race theory, which was a legal uh, theoretical foundation that started in the 70s. And it really has nothing to do with what they say. They say it's, you know, making, making kids feel uncomfortable. But I think a lot of teaching is about making kids uncomfortable and making them rethink what uh, what they're assuming. So I think the whole thing is a distraction against pol to, to distract the base from. Well, what is it, uh, Anita? What is critical race theory? A lot of people don't understand the term. You say it's it, a legal foundation for, for what? For Well, it, it started with legal theory, Kimberly Crenshaw and saying, if you center race as um, something that underlies all the structures, the legal structures, then you begin to have a different understanding and a more clear understanding of where laws came from. And I'm a, I'm, I studied sociology and we have our own little theories like that too, that you really, and it's, it's almost, there's a, a book um, that I really respect a lot by uh, Bonilla Silva called Racism Without Racists. And I think the people who are critical of critical race theory don't realize that structural racism means there aren't rabid racists, but instead there's racism that's structured into laws and, you know, uh, historical situations and so forth that you, you know, you can have racist outcomes with everybody having the best of intentions. Um, so they don't really understand critical race theory. They're just making it harder for uh, school teachers to decide what they're going to say or putting a, you know, uh, making it so that making students feel uncomfortable is now against the law or they want it to be against the law in Ohio, um, which is just uh, ridiculous and uh, dangerous and really see, speaks to rallying up the, the white base, I'd say, in uh, Ohio, the rural areas of Ohio. But racism is not only structured into the legal system, it's also structured into the economy, Rosanna. You know, there's, there's uh, something called a racist wage differential where, where white uh, are paid more than, than black and Latino, Asian. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, people of color face, uh, you know, oppression as, because of the nationality, the, the language that they speak, they they uh, uh, face oppression because of the way that they look, their features. They got darker skin, or kinkier hair, or different looking, fuller noses and 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 lips. So-called race, because that's an artificial construct anyway. And they suffer. We suffer discrimination because of our class. So you can't get around that, can you? Not Rosanna? until we have socialism, not until we have socialism can we begin to really, you know, fully dismantle it. We can dismantle some of it, but uh, not until we have socialism. And I think that, you know, we we as a Marxist Leninist need to, to take on this whole um, critical race theory and, you know, and combat it with, in Facebook and all our social media um, and, and really begin to address it in all kinds of ways so that we can stop that. Because it, it, it's, you know, like you said, in, in uh, Brazil, they use the, the, of the corruption and in, in Mexico, they use the corruption and the narco trafficking, uh, you know, so these are, the right has found vulnerable points in America, you know, in uh, in the U.S., which is about race, which is about, you know, um, making, you know, making kids uncomfortable. What what is that about? You know, I don't think you, when you talk about race, kids don't, they don't, uh, they don't feel uncomfortable. They're learning, and they're learning about the differences in the the. In, and different things so I don't but but you know uh, we have this push about kids and you know they're supposed to be revered in this in this country although many are starving but uh, you know this but there's this whole narrative that we need to really combat 
Absolutely. But shouldn't we be <clears throat> emphasizing pride, uh, Anita, um, working class pride and, and <laughs> the uh, contributions of working people, black, white, Latin, to the history of this country. And that is not uh, exclusive to being honest about the racial origins, the racist origins and class origins of capitalism. I mean, um, you know, when you approach it from a working class standpoint, you can be proud of the working class uh, contributions and critical, but also you can condemn what the ruling class has done. No, I mean, um, and shouldn't that be the approach that is taken to the history and origins? It's not about making somebody feel guilty, it's about being honest about what happened, no? Exactly, and but it does, I mean, it, it is definitely an emotional issue and it's a, a power issue because history is, is written by the victors and when, right. we, when we have the 1776 as the origin of the United States um, as a, a society, um, that's the ruling class narrative. That's the settler colonialism, colonialist version of, of narrative of history. But, but that's what um, that 1619 project made problematic, that it's not the 1619 is really the beginning of American history. And that just really is a different narrative that really empowers is about empowerment of people of color and black people in particular, I think, uh, descendants of the, the, the slaves and brought to the United States beginning in that year. Well, it's gonna be a fight for the election uh, next year. And it's gonna be a, a, a hugely important one. I was thinking the other day, are we in the fight enough? Rosanna, I was thinking, <clears throat> you know, are we, um, uh, rallying around the uh, infrastructure bill and the PRO Act uh, and uh, the Family Act. Are we, um, you know, it, it seems to me that these are, are big issues and that the role of the Communist Party, um, uh, when you want to take a working class issue, we should be organizing and pushing people to uh, get their members of Congress uh, and the Senate or the Congress, the House already passed the PRO Act, right? Mm -hmm. And then there are three people in the Senate who are on the fence. Two in Arizona, we gotta talk to Steve uh, Valencia, about <laughs> two in Arizona and one in Virginia. I mean, it seems to me, Rosanna, we should be putting maximum pressure on them, cats. No, definitely, definitely. I think you know. I think uh, overall, our party, you know, is involved in one form or another. But I think uh, we need to maybe organize like kind of a blast. You know, uh, what do they call that in football? Um, uh, blitzkrieg. Yeah, create a blitz. Uh, mm. you know, on it, I think it would be a good, it would be a good thing to do. I need. Mean, I was thinking that we should have a freedom summer campaign, right? Mm. Get everybody to pledge to support the Pro Act, support the infrastructure bill, support the John Lewis voting mm -hmm. uh, rights back uh, bill. You know, everybody should. You know, if you're not involved in this, you know, with the right wing almost in every 50 states they're putting forward voter suppression bills. That's right. You're either on the side of democracy or you're on the side of anti-democracy. And if you're sitting on your hand, they're going to kick you in the teeth, no? Yep. Well, we're, we're on the street in, uh, in Columbus and in Cleveland and in Cincinnati uh, talking about, and in Toledo as well, talking to folks about the PRO Act. And uh, in fact, trying to get folks to send uh, a note to our Senator Rob Portman, who does not support the PRO Act. Um, and then uh, come fall, we'll be able to tell people, um, you know, they should, if, if they want, you know, to continue Republican policies, uh, you know, that, that, that Rob Portman and his successor probably would not support the PRO Act. So we're hoping to really flip that Ohio district, even though uh, the Senate seat uh, that Rob Portman holds now, that would be a 
big win for the Democrats to get to get such a I know it's kind of a long shot, but I think people are pretty fed up with the uh, you know, it's not just the three senators that are uh, obstructionist, it's the 50 senators that are the first obstructionist. So I think we need to go after all of them. 50 Republicans. I hope y'all defeat Portman. Is what's his name from uh, Youngstown still running for the Senate? Um, Tim, Tim Ryan. Tim Ryan. Mm -hmm. He's the only That's my Democrat. homeboy, whether he yep. likes it or not. <laughs> He said, he said he don't like socialism. That's why he ran for president. And then Bruce Boster called him up and said, hey, yo, Tim. He said, socialism didn't destroy U.S. Steel in Youngstown. It didn't get rid of uh, Sheet and Tube in Youngstown. It didn't get rid of Republic Steel. Why are you so? And they, right. they, Bruce said him the, straight. Yep. Bruce said him straight. The, 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 the staff didn't know. They didn't know how to, they, they, they didn't know how to handle that. Should we mute our call for a Bill of Rights socialism now because, mm -hmm. you know, the Republicans are making an issue of it, Rosanna? Is that- Oh, no, that no, no, no. For unity, should we pull back a little bit? I don't think so. No, not at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. I think though, you know, though, I think the way that Bruce handled, handled that uh, politician is the way we should handle the situations happening right now. Mm -hmm. You know, that's our plus. That's, you know, we bring that clarity. You know, it wasn't, you know, socialism that brought down U.S. Steel. I mean, that's a, you know, perfect thing, perfect line. You know, it's not socialism that's bringing down this economy. It's not socialism that's got people living in tents here. I mean, in Los Angeles, it's just horrendous. Mm. Uh, it's not socialism. It's capitalism. We might think about that as a, as a slogan too. Let me write that one down. Yeah, yeah write it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's right. That's great. Go ahead, Anita. In Ohio, we have um, uh, Jim Renace. We, we, there's going to be socialism in the in the news a lot, uh, or in the p political rhetoric a lot uh, over the next year because Jim Renace had a meeting with Donald Trump, and after that meeting, he announced that he's he's a uh, uh, challenging Mike DeWine for the Republican nomination uh, for the next term as governor. So uh, it's going to be an interesting. Who is he? Who is this Jim He's Renacy? A, Jim Renacy. He's a, a representative um, from Northern Ohio somewhere, very conservative, very Trumpy. Um, and he ran against Sherrod Brown most recently for the Senate and Sherrod beat him. So um, he's, you know, uh, so he's a, he, he he's the hardline Trumper. Yes, and uh, they say Trump's going down in the polls. I hope they're right, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, <laughs> um, but they say Trumpism isn't dead, and and therefore, you know, the and if Trumpism isn't dead, the the, the fascist danger isn't dead. And and you know, by the way, I got an article sent to us the other day, they said, uh, Rosanna, that our task uh, has to be to unite the January 6th insurrectionists with Black Lives Matter. Uh, and, and that uh, that would unite the working class. What do you think about that? Well, in theory, it, you know, <laughs> it, you know, I mean, it's just not possible. I don't see how that's possible. I do believe that some of those people were, you know, very misguided and they were rallied up. I really believe that. I believe that those may be the ones that can be saved. But those hardcore folks that were climbing the mount, the, the building and, you know, uh, were hunting down Pelosi and no, I, I, I don't think it's that simple. Not at all. I and mean, I don't know how possible that is in this moment in time, no. What well, do you think, Anita? You want to unite January 6th insurrection with Black Lives Matter? No, I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I think that's that's missing the widest swath of the uh, the working class too. I mean, not I think I think a lot of the working class supports uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, but I don't think a, a wide 
swath of the, the working class really supports the insurrectionists. They may have voted for Trump in 2016 or, or 2020, but I think those folks are, are, are winnable for, um, for the, the working class side of uh, the struggle um, because their, their real economic interests really are um, not being served by the uh, GOP and Trump. So I think that's getting more and more clear. First of all, I think January 6th was a petty bourgeois, bourgeois. In other words, it was a capitalist counter-revolution. Mm -hmm. Most of those people, my, I think the evidence will show were not workers. Some workers were there, but most of them weren't. Secondly, working class in this country is Black, Latino, Asian, um, and uh, made up of people from all Native American, and um, and 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 so it's not just black and white, you know. That said, the democratic forces that are represented by Black Lives Matter have more in common with like Latino, Asian women than they have with anybody else, including white men. And therefore, January 6th, that has to be defeated. You can't unite with that. You got, that's democracy versus anti-democracy. Mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter represents democracy for all. And January 6th represents its opposite. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's racism and anti-racism, you know what I mean? And so that, I think, has to be our approach. We're almost done. In a couple of weeks, the Congress is going to uh, issue, or somebody's going to issue uh, a, a report on UFOs, extraterrestrial uh, spaceships coming to our space. Um, traveling across, they were sighted by all different kinds of military aircraft. Rosanna, what's the Marxist-Leninist position on UFOs? Do you, do you believe in life on other planets? Uh, of course, I, I, I can't, I mean, we're such a vast universe and to think that we're the only life in this universe, it just doesn't make any sense. So yeah, definitely, and if, you know, if they've come to save us from fascism, I'm welcoming them with open <laughs> arms. They can stay at my house, <laughs> land, their, land their ship in the backyard. It's all right. All right, Anita, what about you? You really ready to take a trip up to the mothership? Uh, no, I'm not, Joe. I'm gonna stick on, the, on Mother Earth and <laughs> also just keep my eyes on the human beings around me, you know. <laughs> All right, you got the last word. I see you on the mother. I, I'm, I'm going up to the mother. Beam me up. I, <laughs> you know, they do. Uh, and a Starship Enterprise. Beam me up, Scotty. Yep. Take care, everybody. Have a good week. We'll see okay. you uh, in the class in Democratic yep. Struggle. Don't be late. Take care and have a, a good week. And uh, we're getting ready for the, um, for the YCL school. Uh, and we got some classes coming up. Um, we got classes on tomorrow, right? Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, prison, prisons and the uh, and the police and abolition and all of that tomorrow. You can check it out on our website. And then Sunday, we got a class on the relationship of the US working class to the international capitalist exploitation. And uh, it's gonna be two, it's gonna be a weekend, uh, what are they calling it? A weekend of learning or something like that. So uh, check us out at cpusa.org. Right. Don't go Bye to now. everyone. Don't go to outer space, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with Bye. Us.